Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to show you a little bit about how to create some chiptune sounds using Reason. Um, what I'm going to be doing is using the Thor sequencer to create our chiptune sounds. And if you're not aware, uh, chiptune sounds recreate the classic sounds of the arcades of the 1980s. Um, if you grew up in the 80s, you'll know this sound immediately because it sounds like most of your favorite arcade games. So to recreate some of these sounds, we'll create a combinator. And then I'm going to just remove the labels, if you just bear with me for a second. Okay. Now in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mixer, a full mixer. And then underneath that, I'm going to create a Thor sequencer, or a Thor, uh, Thor synth, sorry. I'm going to keep the analog oscillator and I'm going to change it to a, a square wave. And basically the square wave was the wave of choice because mainly um, there weren't too many other waves that were used back in the 80s because it was simple to get a square wave onto a chip along with maybe a filter and um, some. that's pretty much all it was. So um, let's turn off the filter envelope entirely. You can even move these knobs down if you want. The amp envelope, we're going to pull the decay all the way up keep the attack down, keep the sustain down, keep the release down. We're also going to turn off the mod envelope because we don't need that. Uh, you can reduce the polyphony down to two or down to one for both if you want. And we're also going to change this to a state variable filter and we're going to change that to a bandpass. I'm going to pull this up to about almost a little bit past the middle and we're going to increase our resonance up to about the middle, turn down the envelope because um, we're not going to need it, and this basically will give you this sound. Okay, very basic. Now what you want to do is um, move the LFO to um, wave up to a square wave, and we're going to take our LFO2, amount is about 65 or so, and that's going to go to the oscillator 1 pitch. So now when you play it, it's going to... And this LFO2 is basically used to recreate what they used to... how they used to create um, arpeggios, because it wasn't... It, it wasn't like there was a lot of room on the chip to put, you know, massive synths like, like you have today. So you're working within the limitations of what you had in the 80s. So what you would do is you'd increase the rate so that it kind of mimics that arpeggio feel when you play it. Okay, so that's essentially how it sounds. And um, you can play it with or without the filter, so we can bypass the filter. And if you bypass the filter, you're going to have to turn that volume down quite a bit. I'll just do it without the filter for now. Okay, so one of the things we can do also um, to get a little bit of a bit crushing effect, we're going to add a scream distortion unit. We're going to change this down to digital. And just turn damage control all the way up. And that's going to make it super, super loud. So what we're going to do is turn the scream down a little. distortion. So let's set up the distortion on the knob here. This will be distort. Or actually let's call it bit crush. Let's give it a nice big fancy word. And this will be our bit crush tone. And to set that up, what you're gonna do is go to the mixer, take button four and have that sent to channel 1, auxiliary 1, send. It'll be 0 to 127. That's going to turn this fully up or fully down. And then for the bit crush tone, we will go to the scream, go to rotary 4, and take parameter 2. So now when you turn bit crush on...
sounds pretty good. Over here, we're going to change the pulse width modulation. That's just a fancy word for changing how wide this square wave goes from 64 to 127. Although at 127, you're not going to hear anything. If you turn it up, I'll show you. See, you won't hear anything, so you got to do it just below 127. And in this case, I'll do it probably to about there, 115. So let's go to rotary 1. Uh, sorry, let's select the Thor, go to rotary 1, and then let's take oscillator 1 mod. And the max is going to be 115. The minimum is going to be 64. Because if you move it, it's bipolar. If you move it on one side or the other side, it's going to amount to essentially the same thing. So that's going to be our pulse width modulation. Now we need a way to change the rate. So let's change the let's change this to be the LFO rate. And for that, we will take rotary two. Go down to LFO, go down to LFO 2 rate, and what we want this to be is probably somewhere around 77. Don't want it to go too high either, so about to 105. Okay, so that's our LFO rate. Now the other fun thing you can do with this is you can, let's just put a random pattern in here for now. Randomize that pattern. Change this to pendulum, or actually, you can, nah, no, let's change it to pendulum. Um, change this to forward. And what that's going to do is that's going to turn on your, um, or it's basically going to repeat this pattern going in the right direction and then back left. And it's going to continually swing like a pendulum. We're also going to unsync it. And now what we need is a way to turn this on, this run button. And the easiest way to do that is to select button 1. 100 is the amount. And the destination is going to be the step sequencer trig. And that just essentially will turn it on via this button. So this will be the start trig. And then up in our combinator, we'll go down here and we'll call... Actually, I'll go over here and call this sequencer. And that's going to start our sequencer. So in order to start it, you need to go to button 3. Um, and you tied it to button 1, so you just need to press that, and it turns it on. OK, good enough. Now, if you want to change the rate of the sequencer, we can also do that. Let's go to sequencer rate. And for that, you need to go down to rotary 3, go down to sequencer, and it's not synced, it's the free rate, it's the bottom most one. I know you can't see this on the screen, but it's called free rate, and what we want to do is select somewhere around 30, and then bring this all the way down till around, say, 148, 150. And now let's turn on the sequencer and we'll change the rate. Actually, we can even turn it up a little more. Why don't we do that? Alright, not that much. There we go. And the alpha rate still works with it. friends is how you create some chiptune sounds using something very simple using just a square wave for both the oscillator and the LFO to affect the rate of well the rate of the pitch of this analog oscillator and if you like this kind of thing what I would suggest you do is go into the factory sound bank under combinator patches and then go under synth lead 
and I've created two chiptune emulators. A uses a Maelstrom, and B uses this Thora configuration that I just showed you. Um, only it's got some other little parameters that, that were added. Um, so if you play it with the sequence on, what I did was I turned the filter off. I'm just going to actually turn this down a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, because I have a bandpass filter that's going through everything. Um, but the cool thing about the sequencer is I created a nice little up and down ramp over here. So if you change it, this is your up and down. And it just changes the note upward or downward. And it uses that pendulum function to go up or down. So you can turn that on or off. Change the pitch rate. Sequencer rate. So that's... So, that was created for Reason 6 um, and included in the factory sound bank. So you have access to all these chiptune sounds, but I'd invite you to come in and explore and, you know, change it around a little bit and make it your own. So once again, this is Rob. Uh, you can come visit me at Reason101.net where I'm going to show you some more tricks and tips along the way. And I appreciate you watching.